Hi, I'm Jamie Tate. Uh, welcome to Studio Stories. I'm here at the Ruckus Room, my studio here in Berry Hill, Tennessee. Uh, nice to see you. Nice to see me, I guess. I can't see you, you can see me. The studio only exists because I needed a place to work. I never wanted to own a studio. It's, it's, it's not the road to riches, trust me. You know, it's not gonna unlock you know, un, unequaled wealth. You're not gonna be a, a millionaire owning a recording studio. It goes the other way, but I was working at a, another studio. We were booked a whole year and a half in advance. For seven years, we were booked a year and a half in advance. Um, it was Pantera's dad. And then when Dimebag was killed on stage, she came in the next day and goes, studio is closed. I'm like, well, we have two sessions tomorrow. He goes, that's it, studio's closed. So I took a week off. I knew it was empty. It was sitting here empty for years. And I loved the studio and I got loans for this place. And um, here I am. The, the studio is just a pile of gear without me though. So it's it, it's just a place to work. I know it's it's big and not many people have rooms this size anymore, but uh, it's just, I need a place to work. So that's why I own a studio. <laughs> and it's also the reason for all these gray hairs right here. One popped up the other day. They make noises when they pop out, they go ting. I can hear it. And music's important. It's my, it's, it's got me through a bunch of, you know, life, speed bumps it's uh i i internalize it i get emotionally excited you know when i listen to a, look, look at this i'm talking about music i have goosebumps right now when i listen to a really great song you know the hair goes up um like i'll listen to a beethoven symphony and it it hits me harder than like heavy metal will it just it's so impactful and it moves me emotionally i grew up on music just i knew when i was in kindergarten music was something i had to do i'm not a musician I never wanted to play. I wanted to, I don't know. I, when I was in sixth grade, I joined the Columbia Record and Tape Club. Remember that? You get 12, 12 cassettes for a penny. Cassettes, right? Uh, so I got, uh, I got, you know, the Columbia shipment. And there was this one album. It was Billy Joel's Songs in the Attic. It was a live record. And I was obsessed with it. I played that tape so much, it literally wore out. I had to buy another one. Then my parents got me a CD player, so I couldn't wear out the tapes anymore. But I looked on the liner notes and there was this, you know, mixed by Jim Boyer. Mixed, what, the, what does that mean? I asked my, my, my dad, he's like, oh, that's, they have those big mixing boards, you know, and sound consoles and they move those sliders. And all the wrong terminology, but it was enough to tell me that there is an actual job that, you know, you're recording and mixing music. And I'm like, well, that's for me. Sign me up. And next time Billy Joel came into town, you know, I'm sixth grade. What are you like, 11, 12, something like that? The, it was a live record, so his live engineer had worked on it. And I went up to him, you know, as this little kid, well, I'm, I was tall, but this little tall kid. And I went up to him, I called, Mr. Ruggles, will you sign my CD? I called his Billy Joel's front of house guy by name, Brian Ruggles. He's like, what? Is this a joke? Is this, did somebody put you up to this? No, I asked him, please, would you sign my CD? I'm obsessed with this. I want to become a recording engineer. He's like, that's awesome. He signed it and he goes, let me, let me take you backstage and meet the band. So I got to meet Billy and the band Liberty and, you know, David Brown. And uh, they signed my CD. It's framed on my wall now. That is ground zero for me. I knew I had the passion for music. And I know a lot of people have the passion for music. I see it every day when they come in here. Some people just want to be stars and celebrities. That's, you know, that's, that's fine. But other people really have the passion for it. Man, keep creating. Because what you create at 16 is not going to be as good as what you do at 18. It's going to, when, you, when you're 20, it's going to be even better. When you're 25, it's going to be even better. Keep creating because you're going to see the progress. You're going to create some stuff that probably will blow your mind. I created that. It's such a good feeling, you know? And that, that empowers you to be even better. And that empowers you to create more. Just keep creating, man. People need music. They always got to have their tunes. I know it's, it seems like music's not as important as it is, but I, I, people are consuming it. We don't see it quite as, you know, apparent as it used to be, because we used to have bumper stickers and t-shirts, you know, we used to go to shows and stuff, but uh, we lived the life of a band we listened to. Now it's a little different, but people are still consuming all that music. We were looking up all these classic artists the other day. Like, what was it? Like, uh, Dolly Parton had 11 million streams in a month, and Merle Haggard had, still has 7 million streams in a month, and you know, people love music. It's really important to them. And it becomes more important to you as you get older, because when you listen to the songs, it brings back those memories. You, it puts you right back there in eighth grade when you're, you know, 
doing whatever stupid stuff you do in eighth grade, but man, those are the good times and music is what reminds you of those good times. And thus we love the music. So it's really important. Keep creating. There are ways to get your music out there. There are ways to build, build a fan base. Now it's all changing and we're still trying to figure it out. But man, if, if you want to move somebody, you know, write a great song. Don't do what's on the radio. Write a great song that's you. Speak to us, you know, and that's, that's the stuff that gets me excited. And I, I'm working with a bunch of those artists now. Somehow, I'm working with a bunch of really great artists and their music is moving me and that's why I do this. So, keep on keeping on. It's important.